let's get started. So I'm going to be showing you how to make a um, switch for the switch design competition that we do every semester. Um, oh wait, I'm not screen sharing, am I? Let me, all right, we'll edit that part out. Okay, what's up everybody? So I'm gonna show you how I, um, edit, how I would go about editing a, um, or creating a switch for the switch design competition that we do every semester. So the first step is uh, obviously not in SOLIDWORKS, it's just coming up with an idea. A different way to press a switch, whether it's like, you know, stepping on it, squeezing it, having um, a box with multiple buttons. Um, that's, it's, it's, it's very subjective uh, to the individual. Um, but for this example, I'm going to be kind of recreating, kind of ripping on another design that we have, um, where it's just a box with eight buttons arranged in a particular fashion. So the, the first thing that you um, need to be aware of is, well, after that is that this 3D model, which we have on the Google Drive, is the switch, is like the button that we use. So this plus part is what's pressed in. Um, and then this whole casing just needs, to, you need to fit into the, uh, the switch itself. So I'm gonna start with creating the base of the box. So I'm gonna hit new. Um, I'm gonna do it in inches. You do millimeters, but I'm gonna do it in inches. And how I would start is create a rectangle um, sketch. It really doesn't matter which plane you start in. Um, I usually pick it randomly, but I'll do it the top plane. Oh, and this, this command just like lets you um, change the orientation. Um, go to the sketch, with this rectangle, and draw a rectangle. And I'm just going to arbitrarily choose that it's going to be 3.5 inches wide and six inches long. Um, and you can always go back and change it. It's not a, not a huge deal. And I'm going to go to features. I'm going to take this two dimensional drawing and by hitting extrude boss slash base, uh, you can choose basically how, how far you want this two dimensional drawing. Um, kind of check it out. So I'm going to do like two inches. No, that's a little much. I'm going to do one five inches. And there you go. I have a, a rectangle prism. So now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the walls for this, this, uh, this case. So when I, again, I'm going to go to rectangle. Um, and this, this whole palette is just a bunch of different shapes you can do. If you hit these drop down arrows, you can you know, change how you want to define it. If I was wanting to find something based on two corners, you know, I could use this. Um, but since I'm basing this around the origin of the um, top plane, I'm going to do center. I'm going to uh, click here. Right here. And then something else. So, now to create a wall, you're going to need to basically create another um, smaller rectangle inside this so that you basically have, you know, like a, a rectangular um, shape to extrude. Uh, so one way you could do it is you could, again, make another rectangle, start from the origin and go here. And then you could define the lengths from this edge to this edge or this edge to this edge. Um, that's one option, perfectly valid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to offset entities in Sketch. And then that's going to take all the, the lines that I produced, previously drew. I'm going to deselect these hashing lines. Excuse me one second, I messed that up a little bit. There we go. Um, and now it's offset by 0.1 inches. And I don't want it offset by 0.1 inches I, uh, outside because now it's going to be uh, going the wrong direction. So I'm going to hit reverse. And now it's offset inwards. I'm going to go to features, extrude box space. And now I have a wall. I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this one inch. And there, that's the, that's the base of the box. Uh, the next thing I'm going to work on is I want to create the holders for all the, all the switches. Um, so what I could do is I could basically like what I've done in the previous two 
um, features draw out a shape and then extrude it. But then I would have to draw out eight, eight shapes and extrude them you know, eight times. Um, and that's a lot of work. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new part. And I'm basically going to draw the shape once, and then I'm going to uh, insert it into the drawing later. So I know the general shape that I want is going to be something like this. And as you can see, uh, normally they, you know, they automatically uh, form with relations. So, you know, it's vertical or it's horizontal or it's parallel to something else. Um, but I kind of messed up at the end here. So what I'm going to do to make sure that this is a flat line as opposed to an angle line is in the sketch tab, I'm going to hit display delete relations, it's down arrow, add relation. And I'm going to, this one, see this line is already selected. I'm going to do that line and then this line. And then I'm going to make them horizontal. And then that uh, takes care of that. And I know that I want each of these to be about, let's say, 0.1 inches in thickness. Very easy using the smart dimension tool. And now I need to know basically how, how, how much space I need here and uh, here and whatnot. So I'm going to go into the switch and I'm going to measure it. So I know that I want this to basically sit tightly, basically. So this, this wall right here is, is what's going to sit into the switch holder. And then I want this these tabs to block it from uh, going any further. So this distance from this side to this side, um, as you see it's measuring millimeters, is a very simple fix. I'm going to put this in millimeters, change length unit to inches. There we go. It's 0.55 inches. And I assume the length from that plane to this plane is going to be 0.55 inches as well. So okay, so now I have that, I have that measured. And I'm going to, again, go into Smart Dimensions so I can find this as slightly larger than 0.55 inches. Because if it's um, 0.55 inches, chances are when it prints, it, it's going to print with you know, some error, and it's going to be too small, and it might not snap it easily. So I'm going to make this point, let's say, 0.6, 0 .6 inches. Do the same here. And as you can see now, that everything uh, has been uh, defined. Uh, there's basically no wiggle room for anything to give a different dimension. You can see in the bottom bar it says fully defined, which means you're good to go. Everything is everything's good. Um, then feature, I'm going to extrude boss space again then create the holder. And I don't know exactly how high I need to make this. So I'm just going to start with 0.7 inches, and then I can go back later and easily change that. There we go. Let me save this and then it's in the new folder. Make a new folder. Hold. Switch to that. So now I want to add the holders to the box itself. Um, I can't do that in a drawing, so I have to make a new uh, assembly. So I'm going to make an assembly. 
Your inches. And to start it out, I need to insert my first piece. I'm going to do this. Um, and then I'm going to include, I'm going to, so go to assembly, insert components, and I'm going to add the holder to state times. And what you could do is you could just put the holder, place it here, and then, you know, it clicks out, and then you have to go back into click insert components, do it again. Um, a nice shortcut is once you hit insert components, hit this little um, thumbtack icon, and then you can keep including parts. Right and what I want to do is to rotate this bottom row around. Um, it'll become obvious later why, but it just it just makes wires um, work easier. So right click, hit move with trial, and then you can easily rotate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these four buttons on the right be in kind of two rows, simply. And I'm going to have the left buttons be in the shape of a D-pad of sorts. Um, so now we need to define all these in places. That's going to take a little, bit, a little bit of time. But if you want to define something in an assembly, instead of hit smart dimensions, you're going to want to hit mate. And then you basically pick two features and then you relate them in some way. So like I'm going to hit this back wall here and then the wall of the box. And it's automatically going to think I want it concentric. I don't. So I'm going to click parallel and it's going to make them parallel. So I need to do that for all the pieces. I have a question about the sizing of it. Mm -hmm. So you made one of the dimensions bigger like on purpose because of when it's 3D printing. I'm just confused. I made one of the, oh yes. Um, so let me do these last two relations and then I'll show you why I, um, I did that. Okay. It's really interesting to see your process in doing all this. Is it different from yours? Mm -hmm. I want to see you do a video. Oh no, my mine is way worse than yours. I like never make an assembly. So, yeah, inserting this piece here. And you got some mates to um put it into place. So I'm going to make this uh, this flat area here, and I want it to be touching this back wall. Um, and then th in this case, I do want it concentric, so I'm just going to hit the check mark. You can hit this check mark or this check mark; it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to have this here be concentric with this. And as you can see, there's a little bit of wiggle room here. That's actually probably m way more than enough wiggle room. So I, I should I should make the size smaller. Um, but the reason why I have it bigger than the switch itself is because when it prints, you know, it's, it's not going to print perfectly on this line. There's going to be errors. So occasionally it might go in a little bit here or it might go out a little bit here. Um, and you know, it's like uh, along the way. And if it, if it goes in like this, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really change anything. But if it goes out like this, um, then it's possible that 
this will no longer fit in. Um, so that's just that's just a design feature you, you should take into consideration for um, uh, for three D printing. Um, it's less of an issue for the switches because they kind of snap in, and you want it to be a tight fit anyway. So even if it is um, a little too small, you can kind of usually press it in anyway. It just might be a bit tougher. For the buttons later on, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have um, some clearance and. You, you definitely want a lot of clearance for the buttons because when you press it down, uh, you, you basically want to be able to move um, in and out without any friction, uh, if that makes sense. So yeah, let me go back in to folder. I'm going to change this to, um, also the amount of space that you need depends on the printer setting and the printer itself. So if you know you're using a high quality printer and you're printing it at a high quality slicer setting, then you know you don't need as much space as if you were doing uh, a quick low quality printing. But most of what we do in this club is tends to be quick and low quality because we have only a couple printers, they break down all the time. And we just want more stuff. So I'm gonna make this point 57. You know what? I'm going to make a point of TA because it's going to make the math easier later on. It's got to update, and now you can see it's tighter. So I think that's, that's pretty good for now. Um, so going back to placing all these where we really want them to be. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this right side. And I want these to basically be symmetric. So right now you can see there's a lot more space between these two than here. I don't want that. So I am going to, and this is going to be kind of arbitrary. I don't have an exact science for how much space there should be between the wall and the holder. It's just kind of what looks right and then what looks right. So once I go to the mate, um, I'm going to go, go down here and then this, you know, this line, two lines with the arrow in between is distance. So I can define how much distance I want to uh, be between them. I'm going to say 0.25 inches. Okay. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to make this Concentric. And don't don't worry if it flies off into uh, uh, you know space on you know I'm gonna make this 25 inches as well. And now what I want to do is I want to have them be symmetric uh, in front of these walls. So I'm going to say probably about That looks pretty good. So I'm going to keep it. I can always go back in later and change it. So excellent. I defined, I defined, yeah, you can see the problem I'm about to talk about. So I defined these in the X and Y planes, but the issue now is that some of them can be higher up. And then when I initially placed them in, they were all uh, basically 
uh, the bottom is concentric with the florist, but moving them around, they can easily change. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to click the bottom of this, and this part that I clicked, it is now uh, semi-transparent, so I can scroll around, and I can click the bottom here, and then make that concentric. So, do that for all of them. Actually, no. That was a mistake, I was trying to look at. Interesting. Okay, ignore that last bit right there. Another thing to be aware of when 3D printing is if you can, you should avoid steep overhangs because um, then it will either print poorly or it will print with supports and require more material than it otherwise would be needed. But that's not really going to, we're not really going to run into that issue on this, this project. Okay, awesome. So now these are all concentric with the base. Um, oh, something else I forgot to include. Sometimes you kind of got to be creative in how you look at things. So there we go. So I'm going to make this distance one inch. Might change it later. So now I want this this piece to be directly in the middle here. So I am going to go into evaluate. I'm going to hit measure. You want to see what this distance is. And this wall and this wall is 1.1 inches. So I will want this center point right here, this midpoint of the line, to be one point one divided by two. We do simple math in here. Do the same thing for this one. All right, and I want this to be symmetric. So I'm going to make this 1.1. 1 .1. And I can see the issue that arises is that when I made that um, that relation, um, it, it moved this one to the right and it moved the bottom one to the left because I never defined the dis their distance from the wall. So first I'm going to say that I want these to be concentric. There we go. Hmm. Maybe made a mistake in there. Interesting. Okay, so apparently I made a mistake. So this is not concentric with this. 
So I'm going to go into my mates and I'm going to see what the problem is. So I just, I know it's got to be a recent mate. So um, when I hover over this, I can see everything that I did recently. So. Hmm. Oh, I know what I did. I defined this as 1.1. 1 .1. Um, I should have defined it from here to here, to this midpoint. From this midpoint, this line should be one by one. One point one by one, two, excuse me. There we go. At this point five. And as you can see, it's fully defined. So that is, that is my base. And I like this arrangement, so I'm going to keep it. I could make the box smaller because there's you know a lot of extra space on the sides, but I think this is fine. So next thing I'm going to do is add the rest of these switches. I probably don't need to add a light. Um, probably just one or two is fine. But if I can, I like to be thorough. And then when I'm going, if I were going to be presenting this and entering this into the contest, I would like to um, have it be like the final design and let it you know, look pretty. Okay, so I can't actually see the bottom of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use another tool that is very useful, um, and this is section view. So in this top row, um, you basically have a section view and you can cut away all of the material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna cut away the bottom. And then now I can see the parts that I wanna see. There may be a faster way to do this, um, but I'm not sure of it.
is, yeah, this is the longest part, I promise. And there we go. Awesome. And then with this, I'm going to deselect this so I can see everything again. And there, that's all the buttons in place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the actual 3D printed button. You know, that, that, that clicks this actual button. Um, because uh, it looks kind of, you know, it looks ugly to leave this exposed. Um, and it'll be easier to, you know, press something a little bit larger. Hit new. And I'm just gonna do something simple. I'm gonna make a make a circle. So first I'm gonna have a fairly large circle of say 0.75 inches in diameter. I'm going to extrude this by 0.1. And no. Hmm. 0.6. Oh, 06. I'm going to extrude another circle. And I'll explain to you later why I have two extrusions as opposed to just one. I'm gonna make this about half an inch. No. Save it as a button. And there we go. I'm not going to uh, include it in the drawing yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the, the, the top of this switch. So I'm basically just gonna make the wall um, from before, but with, you know, a shorter wall. Start the top thing. If I remember correctly, it was 3.5 and 6. And I don't remember what the wall thickness was. Actually, I think it was meant to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check just to be sure. This one doesn't have to be quite as big, so, you know, point 0.2 is fine. Make it 0.3. Because um, we'll need some way to attach the top to the base. Uh, usually what we do is uh, include a couple of holes for zip ties, um, which is a bit, you know, prehistoric. 
in terminology, but it's, it's the best we've got so far. Yeah, awesome. So now what we need on the top is uh, the holes for the buttons. So I'm just going to throw in a couple of holes roughly where I want them to be. Um, you don't have to be precise now. Uh, I'll let you know later. But I know that, so I want each of these holes to be 0.65 uh, inches in diameter because I'm going to have a lot of clearance so that they can move in and out very easily. But as you remember, the, the, the brim of the buttons was 0.75. So it'll make sure that, you know, they don't get pushed out too far or just fall out. And 0.65 is probably smaller than it ought to be because then it's going to have a decent amount of clearance. But um, it's fine for this purpose. Then you can you know print it and then and then test it and change the size of the uh, button if you don't like it. You'll probably be neater with the placement of these dimensions. I'm just kind of rushing through it. So now I basically want the holes to center over these plus signs. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the right side and I'm going to find the middle point here to the small right here. So this is 0.3 inches. And then from this wall to this middle point is Oh, sorry. This is 1.8, 1.77 inches. And this is, this is And from the, the midpoint to the other wall is one point one one. Also, I should explain um, when you find the distance between two points uh, or you know a point in a line, it'll give you you know a normal distance, height, and then the the hypotenuse distance. Uh, so in this case, obviously you want the you know, normal distance. We'll see. Control B. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Excuse me. All 
I don't even know all these. So I guess they're just gonna do the same thing. My solid verse is a bit strange. Sometimes I have to you know, click apart uh, a new solid, a different solid verse file multiple times to open it up. I don't know what it is. Somebody leave a comment. Some of you guys are talking to yourself. If you have a question for me, feel free to ask. Just absorbing. But I might okay. also head out. Oh, okay. Well, goodbye. Yes, you did. See you, Michael. See you, Melissa. Thank you for the video. Mm -hmm. Not a video, but yeah. This is point ninety nine. Point ninety three. Just remember to the time. Two point eighty seven. Okay, awesome. Now we have you see again it's fully defined. We have everything where we want it to be. So we'll go to features and set up extrude boss space, extrude cut, and basically does the same thing except it takes away material. Um, there's a couple of options you do. You can do you can do blind, which basically uh, will extrude a certain distance. In this case, point three inches. You can do through all, so basically extrude everything in this direction up until infinity. Or you can do uh, up to next, which basically will extrude up till this the next feature, which is this wall. Um, in this case, ex up to next and, and through all and blind point three inches wall accomplish the same thing. But I'm just going to do up to next. Now we are almost done. So now what I got to do is I got to add the um, top here. Move with triad.
And there it is. You can see it's all lined up well. So we don't need to go back and change it. Um, one thing I do want to see is, oh, let me add the buttons first. That's important as well. Since this video is already basically a, um, about an hour long, I'm not going to add all eight. I think that's, you know, overkill. I'll just add one. Just gonna save this. So again, I can't see the underside of the top, so I'm gonna use the cut tool. I'm gonna rotate it like this. No, I can't. And then the automatic suggestion is concentric. This is, again, this is way bigger than it, this is way smaller than it, than it ought to be, but I'm just gonna keep it for now because it will work. Um, so the next thing uh, to take note of is that, as you can see here, the switch uh, does not extend all the way to the button. And we want this to basically be a distance of zero so that when you press on this button, uh, you are actually pressing the switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance. It is 0.14. And I'm going to take 0.14. Off of here. At this point, it's six. Yes, to rebuild. And there it is. It's a, it's a pretty good distance. I'm happy with that. And we've got is, is uh, no longer need to be looking at this. And there, just imagine, you know, adding uh, seven more of those. And you're almost done with the switch. The last two things, um, the last, actually, there's a couple things you need to do. First off, these edges are too sharp. Um, you know, we don't want to poke anybody's eyes out. So what I always do to uh, many features, uh, things that I, I create is I add a fillet. And a fillet is basically just curving things out. Um, the same tool you can do a chamfer, which is basically just cutting a straight edge, um, but fillets are usually a little nicer, I think. That's good. Do the same on the top. Here. It's almost done. Um, now what we need to do is we need to add the holes for our cords into the wall. So what I would do is I would add four holes on this side and four holes on this side. Um, I forgot the exact diameter that they ought to be uh, because we use different cords for uh, you know different projects we recently, ch recently changed, but I'm just going to make the 
diameter is about 0.5, 0.25 inches. And one thing that is useful is rather than to make the holes straight on, it is, it is easier if we make the holes at a 45 degree angle. Because when we, it's, it's kind of hard to explain over SOLIDWORKS, but when we insert the wires, it's easier to insert the wires going at an angle like this rather than straight on. Because, you know, if we're going straight on, we have a lot of, a lot of features on the inside getting in the way. So in order to put a 45 degree angle, we are going to need a new plane defined. And we're going to go into reference geometry, genre, and add a plane. So we're going to use the first reference to be this wall and the second reference to be this surface. And it's looking good. That's the, that's the plane that I want, basically. If, um, say, if it was going the opposite way, it was going like this, then you could easily just flip offset and you could have it go in that, uh, in that direction, but you want this. Extend a little bit. And I'm only going to do this on one side, because again, um, this has been going on for a little while. I'm going to define these as a distance. So this is going to be kind of tough because since they are at an angle, it is kind of going to be based on what, what looks good um, in the end result. And then I can go back and change it later. But based on intuition, I feel like this is good enough. I know this length is 0.6, so I'm going to divide that by 4 and make each of these 1.5 inches away from each other. Wrong, not 1.5, not divided by 4, divided by 5. Okay, features, shoot cut. And I want this to go in the opposite direction, so I'm just going to drag this arrow and go this way and do up to next. There we go. I think this is at a pretty good height, so I'm not going to bother with changing the um, vertical distance. As you can see here, this is this is going to be a lot easier to insert the wires into um, than if it was going straight. And again, I would do this on the back side as well. Um, the next thing that I would do is add the holes for the zip ties. So I'm going to put this side here, just do a small little circle. It's about 0.15. If I get the size wrong, it's very easy to change. You know, just take a drive to it. Sorry, I just 
You too, Strude? No, oh, excuse me. Oh, Strude cut. And then you just hang on top in a similar position. There we go. Make sure this lines up. It's pretty good. Uh, and this assembly is looking pretty good. Uh, there is one last thing that I would add, and it's not functional at all. It's just kind of a little thing for fun. I would like to add grip etched in there. So to add a word, you hit sketch, hit the plane that you want to sketch on, usual, and then you hit this, this A symbol, so that's your input text. Grip. And that's going backwards. So I'm going to hit this, and now it's going forwards. Should feel it a little bit like you know, 105 is probably fine. I'm going to make this bigger. Interesting. Now it's upside down. So there, I'm sure there is a better way to deal with this, but the way that I deal with this is I would just do this on here and enter a few times so I can zip it I want to be. And then add a few spaces. I do believe it is finished. That's how I would create a, a switch in SOLIDWORKS. Of course, you know, there's lots of different ways to make switches. Uh, you know, if it does something different, it's going to require different features, uh, different process. And I went into this already knowing what I was, what I was uh, creating. If I had no idea what I was going to create, then I would spend a significant amount of time with just, you know, thinking about it, how I want to press a button, and perhaps doing a few mock-ups in SOLIDWORKS. Um, but once I had a concrete idea for the final design, this is how I would do it. Any other questions? Is anybody still in the Zoom chat? I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I don't have any other questions. You do or don't? I do not. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Well, awesome. Thank you for... Uh, Thanks for listening.